Welcome back, everybody. We're here with part two of our guide on how to make our own soft plastic resin 3D printed lure molds. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to go over where to get our mold files and how to get them ready to 3D print. And then after this, in part three, we are going to actually print something. So hopefully at this point you have a resin 3D printer or you're at least considering it. Now you actually need some molds to print. Now I'm going to show you where to get those. If you missed part one of this tutorial series that goes over the basics of resin 3D printing and why you would want to 3D print your own molds, if you want to check that out, that's going to be in the description below. But we are going to get into the different options on where to get our mold files. So option number one is the hardest, but the most rewarding in my opinion, and that is make it. So there is a pretty decent learning curve to this. But that's the beauty of 3D printing. You can take a lure idea that's in your head and then make your own bait. You just need some sort of 3D modeling software on your computer. I use Fusion 360. This is a three inch grub I made for fluke fishing. And I designed this mold box all by myself from an idea into my head into a physical lure I've caught fish on. This is, like I said before, a little bit harder. Um, I definitely recommend getting into it. That goes way beyond the scope of this video. I do plan on doing a whole tutorial series on how to make your own baits though. I'm gonna do a shameless plug here. I make quite a few soft plastic lure molds for this YouTube channel, and I have them all posted on my Thingiverse page here. This will be linked in the description below. All these soft plastic lure molds you see here are free. I update them all the time. They're designed to work with resin 3D printing, and there's always more I'm making. If you guys have anything you wanna see made, Leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to make it. I am not the only one that does this. There's a, there's a bunch of other molds online that you guys can download. Some are free, some are paid for. So I'm going to link both those websites down below. They're called Thingiverse and Colts 3D. This is just a search I did on the other website, which is Colts 3D. Some of these you have to pay for. Some of them are free. You can filter it up here but all of these different files are different lures that you can download and then 3D print the mold for. Hopefully at this point, you at least have a couple molds that you guys want to download and use, but you can't just take that file off the internet, download it and stick it on your printer. As I mentioned in part one, you need what's called a slicer program. So all this does is it takes your model and puts it into a code that your printer can understand to make the physical object. Now for resin printing, there's two main programs. One of them is Lychee, and the other one is Shitubox. I'm gonna link Lychee down below. That's the program I use. It seems to be the more popular one. Both of these programs have free and paid versions, but I found no use for paying for it for what we're doing here today. I'm going to be going over the rest of this tutorial in Lychee Slicer, just because that's what I'm used to using, but this is gonna work for both Lychee and Shitubox. This is what the basic screen looks like when you open it. Um, once you start adding files, there's going to be a lot of different options and there's also a lot of different resin settings. I do recommend researching that yourself. That kind of goes beyond the uh, scope of this video. But the better you understand how all this works, the better you will be able to diagnose problems and print anything you might want to print. These machines aren't just limited to printing lure molds. There's a lot of different stuff you can make with them. There's a bunch of different models of resin 3D printers out there, and there's a bunch of different resins, and the slicer isn't going to know what to do for your unique situation. So it does this through resin settings. There is a bunch of different settings. Here's an example. I'm not going to go over all of these. I do recommend watching a video going over this. Like I said before, I'm going to try to find one. That should help you guys out, but I'm hoping I can avoid this for you guys. Sariatech makes this process much easier than other resins, rather than trying to guess and check until you get it all dialed in. They have a bunch of standard resin profiles that have all the settings built in for each resin they make for most of the most popular printers out there. I'm going to have this link down below too. This is just right off Sariatech's website. They have the most popular printers on here for both Shitu Box and Lychee Slicer. So I'm going to go over Lychee. I already did this, but I'm just going to go over it briefly in the tutorial. We would click any cubic Lychee and we would click our printer. So my printer is the Photon Mono X. So I'd click on that. Once you get that file downloaded and you have it somewhere, you're going to remember it. 
All you have to do is go into your slicer program in lychee. It's going to be up here in resin. You just click on that. And I already have a default resin up, so I'm just going to okay that. And you should get this screen if you haven't done anything before. So all you're going to do is press import and then you're going to select that file you downloaded already. That is what this is. So it gives you different profiles. All I have to do is click on my printer, which is the Anycubic Photon Mono X. And then I go to their list of profiles and I have every single resin they make. So I use Soriatek Sculpt Clear, which is right here. I just click on that and I'm good to go. Now, once you have that profile selected, you can click back up into resins. There is one recommendation I have for changing these settings, and that's going to be over here for price. This is what's going to allow you to calculate how much each print costs. So whatever you're paying per one liter bottle of resin, just type in that price. I usually buy mine on sale. It's around $32, $33. That's why I have it saved as that. So Lychee Slicer makes this very simple to add files. All we have to do is press add file right here. And I'm going to start out with my flute grub. Um, this is actually one of the videos I made. I'm redoing the molds on. I had a three cavity with three different size mold for this. I have learned quite a bit more since I started this channel. So I'm actually in the process of going back and redoing all my old molds. And once I'm done, they'll be updated on the Thingiverse page and you guys can download them there. We're going to start out with the four inch flute grub. I'm going to open up one at a time. Now you can stick as many molds as you can fit on here and it's only going to take as long as the tallest mold on the build plate to print. So we'll open up the four inch grub vented half and we'll stick that on here. This is what it looks like. This is the orientation I recommend printing this in. There are some situations like if you're printing a very large mold that you have to print in two separate pieces that doesn't fit on your build plate that you will have to print it in a different orientation and also if you have pre-built hook slot cutouts that come in here the top portion may not print correctly in this orientation but 99.9 percent .9 of the time you're going to be printing it exactly like this now mine just appeared like this because this is the normal orientation i print in if you guys, if it doesn't pop up like that for you, you can go onto this left hand toolbar and go over to move and then hit on plate. And wherever you put this little tiny green marker, it's going to put that side in the build plate. So let's say your mold popped in like this. All I would have to do is take that marker, go down towards the bottom of the mold. And there you go. It should be facing the right way. There's also the rotate tool. So if your mold was off kilter for some reason, you can drag it back to being normal. The only other tip I have for this is if you are printing a mold with a chamfer on the edge, it makes it much easier to get off the build plate. I try to put those in all my molds. I know some of the older ones don't have them, but since I'm redoing these, they do. So what you wanna do is just make sure this chamfered edge is towards the outside of the build plate. We can move these around as well. The reason for that is because it makes it much easier to get a scraper underneath to get it off of the build plate. And we'll go over that more when we actually get to the printing of the molds. I mentioned in the part one of this video series that we we're gonna go over to figure out how much each mold costs to make, how long it's gonna take. We're gonna go over that with this bottom left button here, which is estimated resin volume. All you have to do is click on that. It's going to load up and it's going to give you all that info. So according to this calculator, this is going to use 308 milliliters, which is 0 0.308 liters. I'm sorry, I'm American. And it's going to use that to calculate our cost with the price per bottle we typed in before. So this one half is going to cost me $10.20 to make. Now keep in mind, this is a saltwater grub. It is a rather large mold. If you guys are making small, fast lures, it should be much cheaper. And not to mention to buy a mold this size that's made out of aluminum would be well over $100. I know how much resin each half is going to take up. This is very important information. Each resin has a vat that holds a specific amount of resin. This is going to give me information on how often I have to top off that resin resin. So, Knowing this, if I was just printing this one half, my 
resin vat holds about half a liter of resin, I wouldn't have to top this off. But if I was printing both halves, I would have to top it off once. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is walk up to the printer, press pause on it, pour in your new resin, make sure it's not overflowing, obviously, and then press play again. The last little bit of information here is on time. So according to this slicer, this is going to take 14 hours, 16 minutes, and 39 seconds to print. But you can see this little yellow danger triangle here. So all that is is because each printer has its own specific specified by the manufacturer light off delay. So those UV lamps that are carrying the resin, every time they turn on, they heat up. So the machine has a built-in default to have a delay in between each time that light lights up so that the light doesn't burn out and the machine doesn't burn up. This is different for every printer. Can put that into the slicer program. I'm not sure where exactly. I haven't done it before. I've been too lazy to. This 14 hour and 16 minute print turned into 17 hours and change actual print time. That's most of the basics of this. There are some more advanced features in this program. I'm just doing one mold half in this part of the video just because it makes it much easier to visualize. But I have a three, four, and five inch version of this flute grub and I need to to print both halves of each. I'm gonna do this all in one shot. I'm gonna add those in now. I'm gonna show you the beauty of resin printing. All I did was I added all the files in. So I have each mold is two pieces and I have the three, four, and five inch fluke grub on here. Like I said before, all free to download for you guys. And I threw them on the same build plate and we are going to see the estimated print time. And we can see it takes exactly the same amount of time to print all of these as it did to print one half of one of these molds. Now, obviously, the amount of resin you use is going to go up. With all that out of the way, we have one final step on the computer side of things. We're going to go over to this top bar over here up top, press export, and we're going to export these slices to a file. This should have your printer and your resin and all those settings there. The slice format is specific to whatever type of printer you have. It should calculate that automatically. All we do is hit export slices to file. And the only real difference you're gonna see in the, once that adds up, you just hit continue. And we are going to save this somewhere. Once we hit save, it's gonna start the rendering process. Now this is just saving a picture layer by layer of what that screen image is going to be and that it's going to send to the printer. This process may take a few minutes depending on how big your file is. Once it's all done, you are going to get slicing finished. This little screen is going to pop up and you hit open folder. It's just going to open it up wherever you saved it to. And that's pretty much it. The only step you have left on the computer side of things is you have to take this file and save it on a USB flash drive. I know most resin printers come with one. That's going to be it for this portion of the video. In part three, we're going to go over printing this file on your 3D printer. And we're also going to go over the post-processing of the mold, how to get it off, how to clean it, and how to do a final curing so you can get this thing ready to inject. I'm going to link all the extra information down in the description below. I'm going to link my files as well as the other websites where you can get them. I'm also going to link part one if you missed that. And that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in part three.